Hello, welcome to another screencast where I'll be discussing the microscopic uh, functional anatomy of uh, the alveoli. So <clears throat> by the end of this, you should be able to describe and explain the structure of the alveoli. <coughs> Alveolus is plural. And then be able to describe and explain the structure and function of the following here, what we mean by a conducting zone, what we mean by the respiratory zone, what we mean by a respiratory unit, and then a respiratory uh, membrane. And then lastly here, uh, a little bit about uh, how oxygen and, and carbon dioxide are exchanged at the respiratory membrane. So let's get started here. This is, you've seen this before, where we've had uh, the diagram of the cardiovascular system. And here at the lungs, uh, what is happening is that uh, carbon dioxide is being dumped off and oxygen is being picked up. So when that oxygen is picked up here at, these, at this pulmonary capillary bed, that oxygenated blood is returned to the left side of the heart and then delivered to the tissues of the body. Right? And so this systemic capillary bed here, the blood that's flowing in this way would be dumping off uh, oxygen to go to, say, exercising muscles, to do aerobic respiration, to make ATP. Uh, and then while they're doing that aerobic respiration, the product of that aerobic respiration of every single cell in the body is carbon dioxide. So that carbon dioxide gas will then get dumped into the blood, and then that carbon dioxide-rich blood will then return to the right side of the heart, which then consequently pumps that blood uh, to the pulmonary circuit, to those pulmonary capillaries, and dumps off that carbon dioxide, which we then exhale. So this is the basic <coughs> flow and pattern of oxygen gas and carbon dioxide, where they're exchanged and how they flow. Now, the microscopic anat anatomical structures of the lung that are responsible for this involve, <coughs> pardon me, the bronchioles. And they remember, we'll look at the trachea here, this is the airway, and then we had the uh, bronchi, primary bronchus, and then this is the secondary bronchus, and then tertiary bronchi. And then what we're doing is we're getting down to this level here where <coughs> we have a terminal bronchiole. The terminal bronchiole is the end of the line. Uh, those terminal bronchioles will then branch into respiratory bronchioles, which then further branch into these alveolar ducts. Now, these terminal bronchioles and respiratory bronchioles, notice that there is, uh, there's no cartilage, no cartilaginous ring supporting them, uh, but there is uh, smooth muscle around there. And this smooth muscle, uh, when it contracts, will constrict the airway, and when that smooth muscle relaxes, uh, it will dilate the airways right, at the microscopic level. And many asthmatics, this is uh, asthmatics. This is one of the uh, issues here is that there, for whatever reason, <coughs> many different reasons, uh, and some that are not well understood, that smooth muscle will be stimulated to contract right, and spasm, and you get a constriction of the airway, and therefore there's, there's, you get a, a wheezing sound Right, with air moving in and out of that smaller opening. And other asthmatics will have problems maybe further up the line in the tertiary, the secondary, or the primary uh, bronchi, some even uh, up here in the trachea, and we'll look at uh, some issues there in another screencast. <coughs> Pardon me. So back to the microscopic anatomy here, we have these smooth muscle that is, again, surrounding the terminal bronchioles and these respiratory bronchioles, but then that smooth muscle is ending here at these alveolar ducts. The alveolar ducts will then open up into blind-ended sacs called alveoli. Again, alveolus is the, is the singular. So you notice that these are rounded, right, spherical structures, these alveoli here, and uh, look like a bunch of grapes on the end of a, on the end of a stem. <coughs> but those grapes, not, instead of being filled with uh, delicious, delicious uh, sugary juices, are filled with air. Right? Um, <laughs> and then they come, come in like these little, they, they're referring to this as an alveolar sac here. Now, there is then some connective tissue here on the, on the outside of these uh, alveoli. Right? But then really, the reason I like this diagram a lot is because uh, you, have, you are able to see these pulmonary capillaries and how the pulmonary capillaries are intimately involved right, and are right on the surface of those alveoli, the external surface here. So here the uh, here, this respiratory unit is uh, sectioned right, longitudinally, and now here it is whole, right, and so you see how those pulmonary capillaries are uh, associated with that. So, 
if we look at this, the red indicates oxygenated blood and the blue indicates uh, deoxygenated blood or heavily carbon dioxide rich blood. So we know that in this system right here, the blood is flowing this way right? and it will pick up that oxygen and move back this way. Sorry for that interruption there. Um, so we're talking about how the blood is flowing through this capillary uh, network here. And then this is going to be then, of course, a branch to the, to the pulmonary vein. You see this is going to be returning blood back to the uh, left atrium. Okay. Um, other structures associated with this, uh, externally we'll see this bronchial vein artery and nerve. These bronchial veins and arteries are systemic not pulmonary, and they are delivering oxygenated blood to the cells of the alveoli, to the cells of, this, of the uh, terminal, terminal bronchial, et cetera, okay? So uh, <clears throat> also associated with this are some lymph nodes here, and again, this is immune. These play immune roles, and they're going to have uh, white blood cells in these lymph nodes, and this makes sense because you're constantly inhaling you know, bacteria and viral particles and fungal spores that are in the air. And if they somehow get across uh, these alveoli uh, into the cells and tissues, you want to be able to detect that and mount some sort of immune response. So let's take one more look here closer at the alveolus and what's going on there. So the respiratory membrane then is the location of pulmonary gas exchange between the air and the blood. So now we've zoomed in very closely here uh, on one alveolus. Right? And so this is the lumen of that, the airspace within the alveolus. Right? And that is, of course, lined with an epithelium. And so here you see uh, the cell of the epithelium. This is, a, of course, a squamous, uh, simple squamous layer. And so there's one cell there, and this is the nucleus of that simple squamous cell. And there's a very, uh, very fine basement membrane. There are a couple of other cells associated with this here. There's a macrophage, which is a type of uh, white blood cell that is able to monitor the air that's coming in there for bacteria, viruses, fungal spores. Uh, and then there is a, another type of cell right here, a type 2 pneumocyte cell. And this is uh, a surfactant secreting cell, so surfactant. We'll talk about surfactant in just a second. All right, then, so there's the, the small little basement membrane here. So let's zoom in and look at this, in, at this interface right here between, again, here's the alveolus lumen. So there's air here. Uh, here is the, there's a little bit of fluid that is going to be uh, secreted here. And this is a, uh, a mucus. And it has this little bit of, like we said, surfactant in it, which uh, reduces the surface tension, reduces the surface tension a little bit of that liquid, and helps keep the airways open. Otherwise, these things are so small and so thin that the surface tension, the hydrogen bonding between that mucus would actually uh, get this whole uh, alveolus to collapse in on itself. So, if you had this and you had this, uh, this surface tension, there's going to be this force and attraction between all these things that would then just simply, or uh, it would attract all that liquid would attract the, the, uh, the mucus to, to, it, to itself and the alveoli would uh, be flattened out right? and therefore you're not able to get any, any oxygen gas or, or carbon dioxide in there. So um, there's your, your, your mucus layer here. This is the cell, right? the epithelial cell, simple squamous epithelial cell. There's a little bit of a space right here. Here's, the, the, again, the basement membrane. Right? And then you have a capillary. Right? And then here's the basement membrane of the capillary. And then this is the capillary, <coughs> uh, capillary endothelial here, endothelial layer. And then the capillary itself, the lumen, right? of the capillary itself, and this is going to be the plasma, and then of course here's your red blood cells. Right? And inside the erythrocyte there, 
is going to be uh, hemoglobin. And we'll talk in another screencast there about hemoglobin. So this is the uh, pathway that oxygen is going to have to take. It's going to have to go, it's going to have to diffuse first into this mucus. Right? So it diffuses into the, into the mucus layer. And then we'll be uh, actively, or sorry, we'll be uh, passively diffused then across the uh, cell, the epithelial cell, across the basement membrane, right? across the basement membrane, through the endothelial layer there, which is very thin right, cell, and then finally into the plasma, and then will be picked up by the hemoglobin inside the red blood cell. When carbon dioxide is dumped off of, <coughs> dumped off of, uh, of these red blood cells, it leaves the red blood cell, goes to the plasma. There's a little bit more chemistry involved that we'll, we'll talk about later. And then we'll diffuse through the endothelial cell, through that basement membrane across this little gap, through the uh, basement membrane of the epithelial cell of the alveolus, and then through that mucus, and then we'll, <coughs> we'll then uh, diffuse into the alveolus here and then be moved out right, while you're breathing. So that is a lot that's going on there, but this is microns thin here. So these very thin cells, very thin uh, layer of mucus actually is necessary to get that oxygen to dissolve. If this layer of mucus here was not there, if it was dried out, this oxygen would not dissolve and therefore would not actually be transported as efficiently across, wouldn't diffuse efficiently across there. Okay, so this is <coughs> up close a detailed look at the respiratory membrane. Right? Uh, click on that animation when you run the, run the PowerPoint, and that'll uh, sort of put things into motion for you a little bit. Again, this is from your textbook, so you can uh, compare and contrast uh, your author's uh, vision of this with uh, another author's vision. Okay, so you should be able to now describe the structure of, the, of an alveolus uh, grossly and also sort of microscopically. Talk about what we mean by, uh, we didn't really mention conducting zones, so don't worry too much about that. Uh, but the respiratory zone here where the gases are exchanged, the respiratory unit of the alveoli and the uh, pulmonary capillaries, and then detail here about the respiratory membrane, including the, uh, the simple squamous epithelial cells, the endothelium, the mucus, the surfactant, and, and then the transport here finally of the oxygen and carbon dioxide, a little bit about that exchange and the pathway uh, and the mechanism for that exchange. Okay, thanks a lot for listening. Bring your questions to class.